Hey everyone, welcome to another exciting episode of the Velvet Cast. Hello, hello, hello. It Hi. took us a long time to get this one set up. <laughs> it's a, It's been a struggle. God damn it. Um, so before we get started uh, today, I just wanted to let everyone know a little something. Uh, today we're joined by Josh, uh, who might be you. Some of you guys may know as Ibis and Thoth. Oh, it's, inf- it's the infamous Josh. I hate you yeah. so, so much. <sighs> but he he's here today. Uh, Gang Mudo is, uh, is a little sick at the time, so she's not going to be able to join us tonight. Um, mm-hmm. But ju- th- just to give you guys a heads up, so for all of you who know us from 8th Kazakage and all that stuff from a long ass time ago, Josh played Donald Duck. <laughs> oh, that's a deep cut. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, this is the f- Donald Duck and like Peter Pan. This is the first time all of us are in the same video in eight years. Yeah. Let that sink in. I'm pretty sure it's eight years. I'm pretty sure that's it's, it's a momentous it moment. Yeah. It's 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 there. Anyways, welcome to now and also to Mark a very special occasion. This is the first episode of a very special version of the Velvet Cast, which I'm calling the Stray Sheep Cast, because yeah. all of us are going yeah. to be drinking. Uh-huh. <laughs> because it has uh-huh. been I'm drinking, dude. It has been a hell of a week for all of us. Uh huh. So uh, and we are recording this on the on the ass end of a Sunday. <laughs> so it's like the rump of a week. Yeah. <laughs> we, we if Strider was here, she'd kill me for saying this. This is our cheers right now. We're all just here. We're gonna enjoy the podcast. Or we're gonna talk to you guys a little bit, and uh, hopefully, you guys enjoy uh, something a little different. Sure. Um, I do not want to go back to Audacity right now because I do not want to know if that's still being a, a bitch. Um, I'm gonna. Oh, by the way, my drink of choice today is white rum. So, <laughs> is that what we're doing? We're gonna say what we're drinking. Yeah. Well, what, yeah what are you, so, what are you uh, drinking? Sponsorship time. Yeah. What, 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 right. what, what are you drinking, this or? Uh, well, uh, I'm, I have in my hand here a Brooklyn Summer Ale from Brooklyn Brewery. I'm, I'm all into those craft beers nowadays, so, yeah. And what about you, Josh? Oh, just some, like, like a case of Bud Light, which got <laughs> left at this house, I was like, really, like I was, a year ago. I was really hoping you would be like, milk, I'm drinking milk, because uh, <laughs> straight edge. Like, I don't know if you drink or not. Also, holy shit, that is incredibly powerful fucking rum. Oh my god! Okay. Yeah, it sounds like it sounds like you're gonna be having a good, good time over there. Oh no! Yeah, no <laughs> I'm sort of jealous. This is a very different. This is a very different video. Um, thank God there's no actual video component to the podcast. Anyways, um, so Josh, just so you're aware, what normally the format is is we'll we'll just kind of talk about our weeks and then go into a subject or a couple subjects that we we all kind of have something in common with. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm gonna go first to give you an example. Um, my week essentially boiled down to, I edited video, a (laughs) lot of video, uh, for some of you guys who know this in the last couple episodes, uh, except for Batman, uh, there's a couple of videos that were, I'm trying to do the new annotations and stuff and link you guys to more stuff and obviously push the idea of subscription and all that junk. Uh, that took me a lot longer than I thought. So every day I had off of my day job, I was working on the channel. So, uh, I'm exhausted right now. And, uh, besides that, (laughs) besides the actual channel work, I did, um, I did start some stuff. Um, I'm not sure. Well, before I get into that, I need, uh, I promise the people who watch the, uh, the stream from yesterday that I would say something. Um... So for those of you who knew, who were listening to the podcast last week, uh, me and Strider did uh, an Overwatch uh, stream, and that was gr- uh, I can already feel the stupid alcohol get to me. It's fucking rum. Anyway, <laughs> anyways, um, so we we did stream. Face yourself, man. No, <laughs> no. So anyways, um, we did overwatch it was really fun it was the first time we did like an actual stream we did a test stream before but this was like we had like eight or nine people it's a very personal thing we had some really cool fans who showed up tatsuo once again thank you for popping in and asking some questions um but what everyone didn't tell me was for the first hour of that podcast or for the first hour of that uh stream i it was me ranting to nothing 
because they couldn't hear Strider oh. for a for a full <laughs> hour. So so I thought the entire time because I'm having like a, a genuine conversation, right? We're talking about Suicide Squad. We're talking about like a couple different things. We're talking about the game Overwatch, and we're you know coordinating with each other. Eight or nine people sat in front of their computers and watched me rant like to myself like a madman for a full hour. And then it took so someone messaged and said, Is uh I, I don't think we can hear Strider. And then it was the minute that that was said, I looked at the time and was like, Oh my god, have is she no. So then we spent 15 minutes getting everything back in line and like when we finally got it we just started cracking up because of of course of course anything that the velvet room touches just has to have some sort of problem at the very beginning yeah man um it's it's our it's your first steps into streaming dude it, it's, uh, it was it was a trademark it's moment stumbles. Um, it's the defects that make you perfect. We had yeah, we, we had some really we had some really great people who who stopped by. Uh, Ninja Yoshi, Golden Goat, um, Tetsuo, and you uh, had some uh, not so great people stopping by. Uh, me, me, well, Mika showed up, which was pretty great, but you showed up, which was pretty bad. Um, jo- Josh <laughs> has a tendency to razz us hardcore on the streams. Um, and, uh, if you guys are interested in, in joining us, we are, we should be doing another stream this Saturday. Um, we're, we're going to maybe look into doing some competitive play and, oh, and, boy. Uh, and yeah, yeah. I'm level 45. You know what that means? It's hell. You can't. Wait, your competitive rank 45, you mean? Yeah. I started oh. at 49 and I've been, and I keep losing my matches. You, you and I are going through very similar <laughs> competitive oh, seasons, my friend. Uh, I'm so like intimidated by Overwatch competitive that I haven't even stepped into it yet. It's it's pretty I mean, great. I I really enjoy it. Um, it's it's a very different atmosphere in terms of like in free play. It's like every now and then you find a party that wants to like get together and win, and it, it's cool. Like I think I think it's like free play is very casual, so it's like obviously it's like hey, if we win we win, if we lose we lose. In competitive, it it just feels like every everyone is trying their best to 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 get there to to win so it's it's, it's a very different atmosphere um and also it the game totally changes better whether or not you're solo queuing or if you're in a group when you do competitive like oh, i feel like oh that absolutely game, competitive gets way better when you have like at least two or three people you're playing with you know, because you can, because you, you can play by yourself in competitive. Oh boy. Yeah. Um. So it's it's a very different experience. Um. I also, I mean, obviously there's Steven Universe, but we're gonna talk about that a little later. Um. Oh yeah. And I wanted to bring this up, uh, because it, it's not part of my week, but it's part of my life. <laughs> I want <laughs> I want to talk about Pokemon. <laughs> I want. Okay. I want. I want to talk. <laughs> right. I want to talk about Pokemon. Oh, we'll allow this. Yeah. Thanks, thanks, Josh, yeah. man, who just is guest starring <laughs> on the podcast this week. Um, jo- Josh, is, Josh has decided he's okay with Pokemon, and I am too. So all right. it's all good. No, okay, so guys, uh, I know we keep making the joke ever since the first reveal of the location that this game was just made for me. But I really feel like it sometimes because everything I've ever wanted in a Pokemon game is in this game. Like I saw the bad guys like it's it's just it's just Rick from Rick and Morty is the bad guy of the game. And yep. like and like the skull uniforms that they're wearing it's like it's the skull unit or the or the or Nunon from Kill a Kill and then mm-hmm. it's like and then you can not wear a hat or wear a hat and they actually have like islander skin tone which is great and all, there's pokemon variants so like pokemon from old regions have a specific variants here so yeah they're alola forms right yeah the alola forms are really cool like marowak it becomes i think it's like a ghost type too ghost fire ghost yeah, yeah ghost fire and then like nine tails and vulpix are ice now and sandshrew's ice and right shoe it, like, it does like like wind surfing like it's 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 he's electric psychic now which i think is the first Com- first Pokemon of that combo, that type combo. It's it's. I could be wrong. It's insane. Fuck, I'm probably wrong. It's a, like I I I cannot express enough how like in the in the last generation like with with X and Y uh that's when I finally got back into Pokemon. 
Uh, and I did a lot of like the mini games to do the to the, the easy grind for EVs and stuff like that, which was really fun doing the little mini games and uh, hatching eggs and learning doing custom moves. I had tons of fun doing that, but I cannot express enough just how everything that I could have ever wanted in a Pokemon game is in this game. The different islands, the Pokemon look cool, the Pokemon variants, the special moves instead of having... Uh, the evolution stone, or uh, the mega evolution stones this time around, you get mega moves. That's so cool to me. So, so are they just getting rid of mega evolution now? Is that is that what's happening? Because they haven't revealed a single new mega evolution. I feel like the closer we get to the date, if there is going to be a mega evolution, we'll we'll see it there. Um, okay. But I I just I don't know. I'm just really excited about this like Pokemon game and it's just it just seems like like everything aesthetically just looks like I know people don't like exec, uh, exec, uh, Executor. People don't like the way he looks, but it, like he's, he's also a grass <laughs> dragon and they're like this was the grass dragon we get, huh? This is I it. just think it's funny that he's a dragon type when he looks like Nothing at all like a dragon, but I, that joke's been done to death. I, but, like, yeah. I think, like, and I, I look at that and I'm like, well, of course he's a palm tree. That's cool to me. Like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Like, maybe, I feel like, obviously, there's a huge bias on my part because it's just, like, this is, like, this is the opposite of what Roadhog is to me in Overwatch. Where it's, like, an I- Islander representation, or Pacific Island, Polynesian representation in Overwatch, essentially, it was a, it was a given to a costume to a character. Um, mm-hmm. which, which, and, and also, I, I don't know, I, Strider and I had a huge talk about it the other day where it was just like, I, I don't, I, I'm not a big fan of the Islander or the Toa skins for Roadhog. I get it, but I think it's slightly offensive and that's. Yeah. And people have been coming out and saying similar things about like Pharaoh's like, you know, Native oh, American absolutely. Style skin and stuff like that. Rain too. Dancer yeah. and Thunderbird. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like. I, I don't I mean that's just and that's just my personal opinion and I mean but if you like the skins like I see where you're coming from I just no feel no like I get it I do get it like it but the point is is that it's the exact opposite of that so it's like uh, like instead of being a giant stereotype for this region it feels cool like everything everything is cool like there's Galapagos Island stuff happening with the bird Pokemon uh with the dance moves and stuff there's different like like this just everything about this region just feels really cool and i i i mean when x and y came out i was hyped for it after it came out because people were hyped for it this is like the first time in a long time i've been the pre-gaming pokemon and like it it just feels good to be part of this again and especially for a region where it's like obviously i'm gonna have my bias which sounds shitty as fuck but this just seems like a really cool region, and everything is just right up my alley. So I'm, I mean, it's it's gl- uh, it's good to hear that you're so amped about the new Pokemon. I'm, I I don't know what it is, but people seem it, the the new Alola form seem pretty divisive. I don't know because like, I've read a lot of positive feedback, myself included. Like I'm pretty pumped about them. I think it's a cool idea to reintroduce, uh, like a new take on old classic Pokemon, right? But there are a lot of people that are like, why the fuck? Like, why aren't they just making new Pokemon? Or, like, why are they even touching, like, the original 150? Like, it goes back to, like, this weird kind of... I don't know. Like, this weird kind of attitude that the original 151 are, like, untouchable in terms of quality and nostalgia and shit like that. And, um, I, I, I don't... I don't agree on that at all. I mean, not not the statement. I, or not... Which... <laughs> sorry. I don't agree with the idea that the 150 are untouchable because, obviously, they're just pokemon like everyone like all the other 700 pokemon like yeah it, it, it's it's one of those things and I'm, yes i'm gonna say it like that because it's funny to me um <laughs> <laughs> like i don't understand like that mentality like, i understand the gen one mentality because it's obviously the nostalgia goggles that they have attached to their face but like i also i mean i i see this as like a, a an, an awesome middle ground like I see this yeah, as definitely. like the these forms for these Pokemon are like it just may I mean I don't know maybe it's because in my mindset it's the Galapagos Island aspect where it's like oh yeah you go to different regions animals might look different yep. evolution may have changed like I like the idea that like Vulpixes in one area are ice 
and Vulpixes in another area are fire. That's a really cool idea. And it's, I don't know, like maybe, maybe it's just, maybe for those people, it's like they don't want their Pokemon, their pure Pokemon to be touched or tainted. Um, but like, I cannot, like I, everyone I talk to is just very, like, this is something that people have wanted for a long time. Pokemon variants, um, uh, they've wanted for a very long time. And a lot of fan variants are just awesome. Like, I can't tell you how many times it's cool. Like, I love seeing Bulbasaur variants where it's like, oh, it's a different flower on the back. Like, yeah, that, yeah. Like that kind of thing. Like, obviously, obviously it's fan art, but like, this is just a cool idea. I, I mean, I think that like, and I feel like maybe if there was a way to breed out, <laughs> that sounds weird. If there was a way to breed out these horrible genes <laughs> that, no. that, 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 so that I can keep my Raichu pure. Um, uh, yeah, uh, that's how I feel when people are telling me that like they like oh I hate these variants. It's like just it's like stop. you know just let us have dogs. the cute Pokemon. Uh, They're so right, cute. You must have a pedigree for the first twenty first generation. I don't oh I don't God. want your dirty right you tainting oh, my. All right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I feel I feel like the minute I put the little southern twang to it, it just it gets it, a little it, too. Yeah, oh, it, gets, boy. it gets too. It gets too much. <laughs> <laughs> the southern twang racism's coming out <laughs> yeah oh yeah no everyone knows me <laughs> no it's your true form yeah my true uh, my true form a, a, a person who's only i think as far i think the only state i've ever been to south is like florida for disney world that's like an it's, it, that doesn't even count i know <laughs> I'm, I'm very well aware um <laughs> God damn. I, I, like I said, I, I'm just really excited for it. Uh, and I think that's... I mean, besides that, I really didn't do much else except for Overwatch. Uh, I feel like that... I feel like, Yeah, I mean, and obviously Steven, so yeah. We'll get to that. Yeah. Okay. Alright, cool. So, does that mean I'm up then? Yeah, or... I'm going to have some rum. Oh, yeah, sure. Oh, oh, okay, alright. <laughs> oh, I see. This is just Careful like now. an excuse to drink. Um... Let's see, my week, I was kind of busy. I had family over at my place, so I was, like, entertaining them and stuff like that. Um, but in my spare time, I've just been kind of keeping up with what I've been doing previously. So I got in uh, a lot more uh, out gameplay hours into Tales of Zestiria. Oh, right. You were and, talking about that last week. Yeah, and uh, so this is these are going to be very gen- generic spoilers, but, you know, whatever, just heads up. I just got to the point where I got my second human party member, which means that two people can fuse at the same time in my party. And that's like the full, that's like quote unquote the full party. I have access to all four elements now, earth, wind, water, fire. Sapphire and Garnet, or Sapphire Sapphire and Ruby are are on your team. (laughs) So I got two gem fusions at the same time now. Um, and I am enjoying it. I'm enjoying myself a lot more. I'm, I'm getting a little bit more attached to the characters. Uh, there's a lot more skits that I've been doing. So like this, uh, I don't know, Josh, have you had any experience with Tales of games before? Not really at all. Okay. So this is all new to me. Okay. I gotcha. So, so basically the one common thing in all Tales games is that there'll be these things that the game calls skits where like, you'll like, you know, randomly get like a little button prompt to have the characters talk to each other. And so like these are like essentially side conversations, but they do a lot to color uh, the characters in a way like, you know, like they're it's when the game, they're not so serious, you know, they're talking about random shit like they okay. react to and stuff like that. So it's a lot like like the uh, codec conversations. It's, the a lot, it's exactly years. like the codec, con- well not exactly, but yes, 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 that's very, very similar. Uh, and it's done like yeah with like 2D sprites like all out, like like look like Fire Emblem style you know and but they're they're really well drawn and it makes me attach to the characters way more and for whatever reason for, like the first like five hours I've barely got any skits and now they're just throwing them at me left and right so like I'm way more attached to the characters now which is cool um, the story itself is still I I think I can see why people don't like it as much as compared to other Tales games. Uh, again, this is like kind of spoilers, but whatever. This is all early game stuff. Um, they kind of uh, fake you out a little bit, where one of the, your early early party members is like, you know, she's like built up to be like the Deutero antagonist. You know, she's gonna be like the main character's partner and stuff like that. And then she unceremoniously leaves your party, like nine hours in which is really early and the uh, characters don't really react 
at all. It was it was it was really strange, like really really odd. Like she's just like, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna head back. Uh, <laughs> I think it's time to bail. Right. Yeah, it's exactly. It's like that, and then like they're just like, well, okay, good luck. And I'm like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. Um, which is fine because I got essentially her replacement, but uh, who because so like. What, uh, so the original character, she couldn't fuse with people. She she didn't have that ability. She she couldn't fuse with Saris. But my new party member, she can. So uh, from a gameplay perspective, it's already way more interesting now that I have two people that can uh, fuse in my party. And also, I like uh, the new character Rose. Her her personality seems uh, way better. So, so I, okay, I, I have to ask. Um, uh huh. When, cause, uh, cause all of, all of a sudden, the minute you add the aspect of fusion, I'm like, okay, I really want to know now. Um, <laughs> when <laughs> I'm a sucker for that. Um, so, oh, I am too. When, when the two characters fuse in this game, is there like aesthetic differences? Um, yes. Yeah, so it handles it way differently than Steven universe. Uh, I think Steven universe hands, it handles it way more interestingly, but, um, basically the way it fuses is that fusion works is that, um, they'll essentially the main character, like there, so there's two human characters. And so when they fuse, their hair grows longer, <laughs> like super long, and grows like white, like Super Saiyan style. Um, but depending on which Seraph you fuse with, you'll wear like a giant version. They all have this like, I think, I forget what the game calls it, but it's like their true weapon or whatever. So for example, the water Seraph's weapon is a giant bow and arrow. So you'll like be like lobbing like water arrows like super far away. So it's, all, um, it's almost like uh, forms, like form change in, in Kingdom Hearts yes. 2. Yes, yes, it's closer to, yeah, exactly, that's, yes, it's closer to a form change for, that Sora does in Kingdom Hearts 2. Um, closer to that. Uh, I mean, like, they'll talk in unison, like Dragon Ball Z style, you know, uh, two characters at the same time, but, I mean, it's not like it's a whole new character, like in Steven Universe, you know, a whole new design. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's still, I, I can't make Opal, fun, though. all right, so that's, that's what right, you're exactly, telling me. Right, exactly, okay. you, you'll have the same weapon as Opal, but it, you won't be a whole new fucking character like Opal is. And suddenly, like, Mitchell's uh, interest <laughs> in this just drops off precipitously. Yeah. Well... No, yeah. And so well, far, there's no wrong. gay stuff. Like, absolutely no gay stuff. So, uh, you know, zero out of ten. Damn me. it! Uh, <laughs> Damn it all! I, uh, oh, God, dude, the channel is so gay right now. <laughs> it, is, it is incredibly so... And I'm not meaning that in any form of derogatory way. I mean, we are literally playing Dramatical Murder right now. The dude, gay oh, yeah. porn well, game. I'm feeling pretty gay right now after the Steven episodes, but we'll get to that. We'll yeah, no, no, that. I'm so excited for that. Yeah, no. Um. Anyways, so, yeah, uh, Tales, this is Syria. It's it's getting better. I don't. I wouldn't say it's my favorite Tales of a game, uh, but I'm enjoying it, and I. it's much more likely that I'll finish this now than where I felt a week ago, but we'll see. We'll see. Um, and then besides that, uh, I've just been watching what I've been, the shows I've been, uh, always been watching for the past few weeks. So Mob Psycho 100, uh, Whoa. yes. Uh, so Josh, you've been watching it too? Oh, absolutely. Time for Mitch. Mitch. I'm a huge fan of one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right, Mitch, you, you can have another shot of him. Don't do that. That's not a good idea. Uh, um, just wait, like. 20 minutes on that yeah dude yeah um anyway so the last episode that i saw uh, I, I, was the big kind of it was terrorist fight right? oh yeah yeah so that's that's the latest episodes i mean mm -hmm. as of next now. one comes out like tomorrow yeah tomorrow okay cool cool so that episode really like locked me like it really like solidified that this series is special in my eyes i think i thought it was really really uh really well done um it's like I read the webcomic before. Well, I, I so, guess so wait, it's a web manga. was a webcomic too. Like One Punch um, Man was. It's like, from what I know, it's like One Punch Man was a webcomic that got turned into a manga. Yes. Mob Psycho is actually like a uh, syndicated manga that's okay. released in like the big anthology magazines. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Got. It. That's what I thought too. Yeah. So it's the same author for for those that don't know as One Punch Man. Uh, similar style, like similar style. I. First off, I like the way the anime the anime portrays the one's art style more. So, like, with One Punch Man, they were going off of Murata's style, right? So that's the yeah. guy who turned the webcomic into a manga, his art style. Uh, so, but for Wild Mob Psycho 100, there is no extra mangaka that came in. It's just one's, you know, very 
endearing but la- like undetailed style it's it's really out there it's it's something that like it grows on you after it a while it definitely does it definitely does and i think bones handles it really 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 well uh where it still looks extremely high quality while still retaining you know it's the, like the uh, they used yoshimichi uh, kamida who was like known for like working on uh full metal full metal alchemist uh, brotherhood oh, okay. okay oh for wow. all those all like right. really uh, brushwork scenes yeah oh okay all right, I, I can see the resemblance. Oh, shit, dude. Yeah, I mean, like, honestly, I don't think this uh, this show's getting the attention it deserves. It's getting a lot of attention. I don't want to say it's, like, an undercover sleeper hit or anything, but I, it's not getting the fanfare that One Punch Man is, and I... Uh, I'm I think a, people are just put off by it not being as pretty. E- but to me, it's prettier, though. I don't know. I, well, it's, it's more interesting to look at. I, th- yes, I, definitely. I, I think that, like... I mean, when it comes to that, I mean, you gotta remember back when back when One Punch Man was first starting off, like that was the main reason why people were watching it. To be honest with you, it's it, it was it was the whole animation thing where it's like literally anyone who recommended the series was like, oh, the animation is fantastic. Also, there's comedy if you're interested yeah, in that. Yeah. Like, I feel like that's how it was sold to a lot of people. So, Mom actually, Psycho, it's interesting. Um, like. Uh, I know a lot of people say a lot about, like, how good the animation in One Punch Man is, but it's something where, like, I feel like One Punch Man actually loses something by having the kind of animation that it does in Right, the because something that was really special with the manga uh, was that, like, Murata would, like, have, it would be, like, almost flipbook style animation in his panels, you know what I mean? Like, he would have, wouldn't he have, like three pages in a row where it was like the same action like it was the same punch you know and like if you go into like onto tumblr you'll find like gifs of people just like putting like the pages together, together like the fact that you can make gifs out of the manga yeah it says all you need to i'm, I'm, say, I'm sorry right? i'm sorry i'm not going to ignore this you guys say gif <laughs> yeah yeah soft g really yeah man yeah. Uh, are we going to do this now? Are we going to do no, this now? We're no, this we're fight. not doing this. We're not having... A, we are <laughs> no, allowed, no, no. We, we are allowed to stop right here. We are allowed no, no, no. to disagree. You know, I I'm, think I'm, I... I'm not one of those people that'll draw a line in the sand or anything. Like, I'm totally... I won't correct people when they say GIF. I just don't... I just don't say it. You know what I mean? And, yeah. I don't know. GIF like peanut butter. I mean, I'll make a big deal of it if uh, other people make a big deal of right, it, right. but it I'll doesn't really defensive. matter. I'll get defensive, but I won't get aggressive <laughs> look, about it, I guess. Look, okay, look, um, we're not, we're not going to have pronunciation. If you're bringing the fight, I'll bring the fight. We're not having pronunciation go, and we're not going to go in the streets and start actual mob war. And it's not going to be Dorara oh. style about pronunciation. I'm not doing this. Okay, uh, but, all right, but, but, all right, but what cool. I am going to do is I'm going to say this much. Um... Just to put my two cents in real quick, because as someone as someone who has watched at least the opening and watched a little bit of the first episode, Psycho, from Mob Psycho, okay, good. It, yeah. It's a series that I was never really in, interested in to begin with, but I will admit it. It is interesting. I'll give it like that right off the bat. Um, but like I, once again, I feel like there's a there's this, the the differences with because I also see where you're coming from, Josh. Where it's like the manga is very different and like i read a bit of the manga and i can tell you this much right now it is a thousand times funnier to me reading the manga than it ever was with the animation are you talking one punch man or oh one punch man punch. one punch man sorry okay okay got um, it. and the reason like, it's definitely a timing thing it, it yeah exactly where it's like there's because the animation is so beautiful and you're in so in awe like there's it's like you have that moment to really capture it, but there's some jokes, especially in the first couple episodes, that just don't land. Josh and I were actually on Rabbit watching the first couple episodes when it, when it was coming out for One Punch Man, and like that was the big complaint on my end was like there's just some the comedic jokes. timing wasn't there. Yeah, the timing just is like when you're reading something, the time the t- the the timing when you're reading something and the timing when you're watching something are very different. So, like, big, mainly because when you're reading something, you go by your own pace. So when you turn that page and something ridiculous happens, or, you know, when when they're having this giant epic fight or the guy's prepping to beat down uh, Saitama, I think that's his name, right? Right? Yeah. Okay, yep, okay, yep, okay. Yeah. Uh, and all of a sudden, he just blows him away in one punch, and all that's left is an eyeball. Like, that's funny. Because you're turning the page, you don't, you know, you're having that moment of like physically moving forward rather than having a, a set pace. So right, right, yeah. it doesn't have I, the the page flip kind of effect. Exactly. So I mean that. I mean once again, this is my two cents. But like Psycho Mob 100 looks interesting. 
by far like it's if anything i totally recommend it over one punch man me too me too i mean obviously the, it's apples and oranges at the end of the day like I, i'm being pretty hypocritical in that yeah I, it, it the overlap is surprisingly not as big as i thought it would be like the only overlap is that they're like both really really strong characters probably and, the strongest and they're characters both very low-key about it but in different ways almost the exact opposite way in a rear like i don't know like they're like Saitama and Mob are like simultaneously like pretty similar while also being foils, and I think that's really cool. Um, it's like Saitama, his goal was being strong, and Mob, it was he was born with it. Yeah, exactly. Like like Saitama worked. I mean, as much as a bullshit explanation is, he worked for his strength, and Mob was born with it. But uh, again, so like episode that that the latest episode kind of really really uh, endeared me to Mob as a character. Uh, I thought it was really ah oh fuck i can't really get into it without heavy spoilers but just the now that i understand more of why he acts the way he does i'm totally invested in finishing this the the anime series and i'm probably gonna read the manga afterwards just to get caught up um because like the first few episodes are kind of deceiving in that it it, it it makes it seem like it's just gonna be a comedy anime, you know, like just like you know, you adventures the wacky just adventures like of Mob a and Reagan. Super over animated comedy anime. Yeah, 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 like a like just a huge, bu- huge, big budget comedy. Crazy, but, uh... noisy, bizarre town. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and exactly, and it uh, definitely after this latest episode, uh, there's, I'm way more intrigued. Um, yeah, and then. I guess the other series that I've been keeping up with uh, is, of course, uh, ReZero. I I literally just finished the latest episode uh, oh, right man. before we started, <laughs> and woo, it was a it was a doozy. It was a doozy. I don't know. I uh, I really like that show. Mm. Like a lot. It's like I like ReZero a lot, but I'm also of two minds about it. Of two minds about it. How do you mean? It's strange, really, because it's like ReZero does absolutely everything right. Uh-huh. Almost. Like, pretty much Almost. close to it. And it's sure. like, I, I think to myself when I'm watching it, I should really like this. I should just be in love with it. And on a certain level, I really am. It's like, it's nice to look at. It's got like this. Uh, until a little while ago, it had this thing where like, I really hated Subaru because he totally oh, doesn't yeah. deserve. Oh, no, he dude, doesn't still, deserve still, anything. But I still at the hate same that time. fucker. No, I, I hate Subaru. Subaru sucks, and <laughs> I was pissed off about it until I realized that the show was in on how much Subaru sucks. Uh, I and mean, then I, was I like, think the okay, point of great. it is like he sort of sucks to begin yeah. with, and that's yeah. the point. Like he's supposed to go from there. Yeah. I mean, uh, so for for context, I think the reason why I like this, I like ReZero so much, is that. If you if you just wrote down the premise of the show on paper, I would read it and be like, "That sounds generic as fuck," and I don't really think it's going to be interesting. And it sounds like a knockoff sort of online. And uh, the protagonist, the Subaru, like starts off almost like as like a Kirito knockoff or sort of, you know what I mean? Like just like gets by on the skin of his teeth and is just powerful for like no random like seemingly. To, or I shouldn't say oh, he's like, not he's even powerful. powerful. He's but he, he all these ass pulls so much so many ass pulls. It's classic, you know, and like anime protagonist. I'm like, dude, like, come on, this is bullshit. But then the show kind of turns in on itself and starts to like agree, like, yeah, it is bullshit. Now <laughs> let's see him suffer, and uh, it's awesome. And it kind of I don't want to call it like a deconstruction of that kind of like trapped in a fantasy world slash game slash MMO like genre but like what what really drove home the fact that i really like this series is like it's opening it's opening is so good well, like the one? first i like for I the mean, first season both. definitely okay okay like it was just really great like the three times you get to see it yeah <laughs> yeah that's true that's another thing about the show mitch is that so many episodes they don't have time to put in the opening so they just blow over the, the opening credits. or the ending or know. the ending yeah so like yeah, you see the first opening like maybe five times out of the thirteen episodes. I. <laughs> yeah. Wait, I feel like yeah. I feel like that's either that's either done on purpose or that's or that's done as a giant mistake. Like we. Oh did, shit! Like, we we accidentally animated like five minutes too much. Yeah, I mean, like if there's anything about Reaser that I can say is that they fucking care about it. Like they're putting a lot of effort into this show and. It really does show. It's a really high quality. I would I, say I rate it 
alongside like Fate Zero. Uh, I wouldn't go. Well, okay, well, yeah, it's not like... so much like as highly as Fate Zero because I I just love Fate Zero. Yeah, me too. Like um, at that point, it gets a matter of taste. But I'm I know what you're. I, 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 but I, I say I, like I qualitatively as far as like yes. how much effort they put into it for yes. the studio that's making it. It's up there yeah it, it's it, it is ufotable levels of effort i would yeah, um, definitely for sure there is something i just realized uh, josh we're gonna get like we're gonna i mean sorry i'm gonna let you finish your week and then we can get the josh's but there is some, I'm almost done. there's yeah. there is something that we all have watched that like that is that i like it, it just hit me we all watched psychopaths <laughs> Oh, oh shit! Like, yeah, dude. Like yeah. a series that we have not talked about on the channel at all. We have all watched oh, Psychopaths. So well, we, uh, yeah. we're going it, it to. We, while, we might yes. have to get. We've to totally that. all not watched Psychopaths season two, right? Good. I, yeah, awesome. I haven't, Moving I, on. I have not I, because you specifically there's a, there's a told me two. not I've to. I've never heard of it. What's that? Sorry. I specifically did not watch season two because Josh told me that it is that there is no such thing as season two, and that there, if I try to look yeah. it up, that whatever I find is a lie made by people who think that there is a season two. Yeah, they're imposters. Yeah, they're imposters. There's no season. There's no season two within these walls. Oh my it's, god. It's, it's yeah. It, I got right. halfway through it and then I dropped it. Right, I so, was so, really so, sad. So, anyways, so, anyways, anyways. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, no, it's all good. Uh, so ReZero, it's been really good. I really like it. Ram is best girl, objectively. Uh, oh, God. <laughs> I, I, uh, I mean, yeah, I cringe, true, yes. I cringe absolutely, every single fuck. time any of you guys say that phrase. Like, I hate that what, phrase. What, best girl? You yeah, know, because Josh said it about Steven Universe, and I cringed, like, so hard. Oh, I'm like, yeah, what, Pearl, Pearl, Pearl's best, girl. best gem. No, Paradox. Ram is best girl. <laughs> wait. It's fine. Dude, wait. <laughs> <laughs> what? Pearl is best gem. It's canon now, dude. No, fuck that. <laughs> Our Paradon is totally better. I oh my I, God. I want to say Paradon is, but also Lapis though. But Lapis though, yeah. Lapis is great. Anyways. they're all great though. They're all no, great. They're all great. I can't and the fact take that it. We can have I this have conversation too many uh, broken birds in my life. I can't take Lapis. The, the minute I, the minute I, like, I don't know what happened. I'm like, my heart shattered at the idea of like, we can't pick between these characters, guys. Well, let's because, take uh, Bismuth's well, like uh, power driver to you real quick. Oh my. God. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll gem. show you shattering. <laughs> oh man. Anyways, uh, reason was good. Rem is best girl. They ran out of. Did you hear <laughs> that? Um, after the so for those that have watched Re Zero, they'll know the episode that I'm talking about. But like, I think it was three, two episodes ago with Rem's like, be, that Rem the very Rem centric episode. Mm -hmm. uh, the next week, they, apparently they ran out of Rem body pillows. Like they all got <laughs> sold out. <laughs> that I do oh, not know the character. That sounds <laughs> creepy as fuck. Oh yeah, it's a cute blue-haired character. She'll yeah, be right up your alley. Yeah, it's a cute blue-haired maid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Usually, and that's the thing. I usually hate maid archetypes. I was, I was light up to hate Rem. I was like, oh fuck this. Oh, fuck I thought no, they were she's... just like throwaway characters, yeah, like the, same, the two same. sisters. Yeah, but you know, it, it Rezero like is good about subverting my expectations that I should hate the fuck out of this show. Like, it feels like, like for me, it's something I where I, I like it, but I feel like I'm being manipulated into liking it. It's like... Yes, that's very true, too. Yeah, what's happening? Yeah. yeah. Anyways, that's that's enough about ReZero. I, go watch it if you haven't. It's, it's good. Yeah, it's on. It's on. Yeah, it's good. Anyways, that's my week. That's my week. All right, Josh. So how how was your week? I mean, yes, I like to get room. the boring stuff out of the way. It's like work overwatch like running instances in terra online um past that it's uh mostly downloading and watching a whole bunch of anime wait nice. what is this download that you speak of you're watching this <sighs> legally right oh yeah yeah sure <laughs> yeah. Oh. um uh trust me it's only for stuff that i can't get legally okay all right you know that doesn't sound any better <laughs> that sounds. Uh, that sounds as if like as if you're you're getting some real bad shit there. Oh no, gosh! Uh, why was why good. did I get quiet there? What? No, no. I, <laughs> I, uh, uh, maybe. Anyways. it's like I ended up watching like Under the Dog. 
recently. Oh fuck! I meant to watch that. I paid five dollars for that. Like how one did, of my friends like crowdfunded it, so he yeah. had like a copy of it, but he didn't have time to like give it to me before it moved out of the house. So it's like, oh. Oh. well, how did it turn out? So for those that don't know, it's like it was an anime that got kickstarted like what two years, three years ago. Yeah, it's like yeah. Uh, in the same wave of kickstarters as like Kickheart and uh, what was it, Little, Little Witch Academia, Academia too. too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's um so so Mitch, you might be interested in that it's uh it's done this the same character designer did uh the character designs for Fire Emblem Awakenings and that was like the big like oh hey oh damn nice. yeah so you can see the resemblance anyways how how did it, how did it go how did it turn out um it was I would say it's something like uh so there's this joke between Mitchell and I where it's like uh, Kirito is like somebody we'd find really cool as fourteen year olds sure. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so for me, it's like Under the Dog is like an anime that I'd find really, really cool as like an 18 year old. Okay. Where it's like, I've grown to like appreciate like the different facets of anime a little bit more, but it's like, hmm. it's sort of like, uh, got this like Western aesthetic to it, I guess, at the very core. I mean... That sounds cool. I'm all about blending, like, you know, Western and, like, in Eastern styles, you know what I mean? Like, that, that shit, that shit's I awesome. I would call that's it, why I like, like, Ghost in the Shell, like, standalone complex light. Okay. And by light, I mean, like, free-to-play light. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, um, it's interesting. The world, like, the animation is beautiful. Everything looks really nice. And it's actually got semi-decent English voice acting in it, which is, okay. like, really hard to find. So if you're the least bit interested in it, try to find this to watch. So would you recommend the dub, then? Um, not so much, because most of it takes place in, like, a, uh, like, Japanese high school for the okay. first episode. Sure. Um, there are quite a number of, like, English-speaking non-named characters in it, though, which I do appreciate when, like, huh. studios go out of their way to, like, at least make the English sound believable instead of stuff like in, uh... Oh, oh, that's you mean. So you mean like that that people in the in the in the world are English speaking? Oh know? yeah, yeah. Okay, They've got okay, like uh, I think there's like a U.S. like peacekeeping task force in, a, in oh, okay, Japan, gotcha, which gotcha. of course you know that smacks of like stuff like Guilty Crown. Right, right. Oh boy. Okay, got it. I would say it's probably a little bit more intelligent than intelligible than Guilty Crown, but I, I don't know how it will turn out just because I haven't seen the rest of it, and I'm a little bit uh, about the writer. Uh, okay, I, I got you. I feel like I'm sorry. Like the minute you said Guilty Crown, I'm like that. That was a thing. Oh, it was like, totally it a thing. Like that. It was gonna be the next Code Geass, man. I remember. Oh my <laughs> god! Like I what? Uh. <laughs> what? <laughs> Damn. Oh, God. Damn it. Oh, it, it had... I'm sorry. Now, now we made Mitchell sad drunk. No, I'm not sad. <laughs> Fuck you. I I think it's I think it's more like I just I I can't remember there was a time in my life when like there was like series that were trying to contend to be the next Code Geass. Uh, the, I mean, if you want to watch something that has a legitimate claim to being the next Code Geass, go to like watch the Animator Expo short uh, Iconic Field. Huh. Okay iconic field in fact i just andre since like i've recommended like animator expo shorts to, like mitchell just like splurging them all at once like countless times you should totally watch all these shorts okay they're great i i, I need to check out like more shorts like that sounds dumb but like I'm all about like watching something that's not paced to a 23 minute episode, so I should I should really branch branch out more. So okay, all right, link them to me and I'll check it out. Oh totally. Um, and then I watch like uh, Death Billiards. Death which Billiards. I'm like a year late on this, but Wasn't Death that... Billiards was like. So Wasn't it comes out Parade? of Parade. Oh, it's like an OVA that they made before Death Parade was made. Okay, yeah, yeah, it okay. Pretty okay, much okay. like inspired, like the. Uh, or it brought along, like, the resources to make the series itself. Got it, got it. Okay. Um, it was built out of, like, the same, like, animator, like, program that uh, the original Little Witches Academia was made out of. Um, Anime Mirai, 
which is like a government subsidized like program for like young animators and that gives oh, them like yeah, yeah, yeah. a chunk That's of the money same thing to that, was that the same thing that me 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 came out of um no me 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 came out of animator expo which oh, is like shit. yeah it's right. something okay. made by uh studio organized by studio kara which is headed by uh hideaki Anno of evangelion fame. that's right okay okay yeah and yeah, he yeah. just you know gave people the opportunity to like make a whole bunch of shorts and like hey i'll, I'll put them up for you okay got it okay cool anyways um but death parade or death billiards was like really cool um wait i would hmm Death, wait, you watched Death Parade? Or no. I watched Death Billiards. Okay, Death Jesus Billiards. Christ, I'm sorry. Um, I think it, I don't know if it has the same characters as Death Parade, but uh, I know that it was, like, what inspired, like, Death Parade itself. Well, was it any good? Oh, it was great. I totally recommend it. It feels like uh, old school Madhouse. Oh, really? Okay, how long is it? Is it, like, a half hour uh, death- VA, or...? It's like a half hour to like maybe forty minutes. I'm okay. I would say probably like a half hour OVA. Like around a little witch academia length. Okay. Yeah. All right, sweet. I'll check it out. It's got absolutely beautiful animation. It's got this compelling like it, it has like two characters that have like this great like compelling character arc within like the just ten minutes of each other. Oh, cool. Okay. And you understand exactly what you need to at like within like a couple of minutes, pretty much. I was hmm. gonna say I I'm pretty sure um I haven't checked out Death Billiards, but like it, like I just looking at the images online, it looks like it's the exact same characters from Death Parade. I mean, it's like about like essentially like the like Grim Reapers, like Death Gods, like escorting people to the afterlife right it's like people dealing with the with their own death and stuff like that it's um if uh, well josh uh, you could probably know from death you know death billiards but in death parade it was it, it's sort of like the idea is that these characters are um they're placed like in other words uh when it, when someone dies they're placed into a, uh, a room with someone else um with either similar situations or you know what have you and they and they play a game and it reveals the true characteristics of that person so that they oh, can then okay. make judgments on whether or not they should send them back for reincarnation or remove their soul from the circulation. Oh, okay. So it, gotcha. it's an incredible like it's an incredibly interesting uh premise. And I checked out this I checked out Death Parade earlier this year. It was it was super great. Like it, I it totally was, am super psyched to watch Death Parade now. You know what? Let me know. Like I'm not sure if like when the next time you're gonna guest star on the podcast is, but let me know how you feel about Death Parade because that that was one of those shows where it's like it is way deeper than you'd ever think. The opening is so good. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I have. No, I no, have, it's it's great. Like I Death Billiards was great. It's bumping. Yeah, I like it. Like, like that. That should be the theme to Persona Five. Like that. <laughs> that is how you crazy know, it, that it is. It gives me like a really like I've only like my interaction with like the Persona universe is pretty much limited to like the anime, unfortunately. But uh, it gives me a really Persona feel, actually. Like I was gonna say, you know, that's not the worst thing in the world. Like pers- like the pers- as long as you didn't watch Persona like Trinity Soul, you'll be okay. Like, um, but the, I just watched like the uh, Persona Four anime. Anime. That's a okay. that's a pretty faithful adaptation. Like, yeah, like it's pretty good. Uh, pretty good. Uh, did you watch the Persona Three movies? Not to get on a complete different note, but did you watch uh, any of the Persona Three films? Um, I heard they were out. Um, I haven't watched them yet. Okay. Uh, I'm still I've sort watched... of backlogged on films. So it's mm-hmm. split into four parts, right? One for each season. Yeah, I've I have watched not... the. Sorry? No, I was just going to say, I haven't checked any of them out. I've been waiting for them to all finish up so I can check them out. All finish. Okay, that makes sense. I, I watched the first one, and it was... It was... Oh, okay. It was good. Um, <laughs> I, Did she fall in love with Yukari all over again? Oh, yes. Yes, obviously. No, I don't know. Like, it was... It was okay. I don't... The first... Oh, like, the first part of that game, like, it goes... It, uh, it's kind of slow. Like, just... Like, even in the game itself, like, that, the plot's kind of slow. For the for the whole spring season, so well, you well, know, you know, a big player of the plot doesn't even show up in the until the summer. 
so right exactly exactly so. yeah and they were like teasing her at the end so yeah um all right well anything anything else you got for us josh um aside from that it's like i've just been keeping up with uh an anime called orange which i'd been looking forward to and i'm sort of two minds about and then like i let's see i uh marathoned a show called uh, showa genroku rakugo shinju because i heard really really good things about it yesterday okay i've never heard of that man. um <laughs> apparently <laughs> no one has that? can you repeat what <laughs> yeah no 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 well so what's what's the premise what's the premise um so um uh, in japan there's this like form of stand-up called uh rakugo which yeah. basically they're sitting down like on a pillow and they've pretty much got like two props like a piece of cloth and like a paper fan and they're supposed to do their entire like they like they tell a short story and uh all they have to work with are like these props and then like just facial expressions and uh tones of voice to communicate a story that usually has like two or three or more characters in it hmm and uh it's done in this like really nice like jose art style jose oh, being okay. like for you know like anime that's aimed at people who, like slightly older women so everybody's huh. sort of like this like tall lanky uh like super evolved like shoujo like beautiful guy i'm wow okay this sounds real off the wall uh, you're gonna have to again send that to me too i've been saying this to everything you've been saying but like i, I want to check it out it sounds um sounds it different is for sure. a solid show um, okay is it airing right now or it's finished airing and uh it's a 13 episode show um okay i, I really liked the characterization and like the fact that with this show the main focus is actually the rakugo mm. whereas with a lot of like the shows that are like this where they're about like a certain specific subject they're sort of like these subjects are pushed off to the side and then it's like, like character inter <laughs> interactions usually yeah with this like the subject is like the act of being like this actor okay cool and like a performer um i sort of liken it to uh like it's something where there's been this like sort of drought of shoujo and jose series out there mm -hmm. so i just appreciate it whenever something like this gets animated um yeah these characters don't act like typical anime characters which is like one thing in its favor where like they act like actual human beings oh my god <laughs> okay um but like I totally recommend it as something to at least try. Um, it's not going to necessarily be for everybody. And it is one of those, like, sort of... Uh, it's one of those slow-burning, sort of uh, down-to-earth series. Hmm. Set in, like, the Showa period and, like, the post-war, like, Japanese, like, reconstruction period. Okay. Well, it sounds cool. I it, yeah, your from what you described, it sounds really different, and I think it'd be a nice change of pace from what I've been watching now, which is strangely a lot of a lot of shonen, just so much shonen. Oh man, <laughs> I, I do a, need a good shonen series in my life. <laughs> I <laughs> always there is a great shonen series for you to be watching, and that is called JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Um, <laughs> JoJo's <laughs> is not shonen. I know it's not shonen. Shut but up. I know it's not. Say hey, fuck you. Um. I, okay, so there's something I forgot to mention during my week that I just wanted to get real quick before we get into the main topic. And I'm so sorry, guys, that Weeks took this. Like, for the viewers at home, I'm so sorry that Weeks took, like, an hour. But... <laughs> I mean, you know, uh, last absolute last thing, I was super sad that this week we didn't get an episode of BattleBots because the Rio oh. Olympics... Yeah, battle bots. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's a thing. <laughs> apparently, oh, I now. That. <laughs> um, so, uh, a real quick, uh, I wanted to just share this because as uh, Sora has context uh -huh. for this. In between my renders this week, when I wasn't, when I, my fingers got sore from playing ukulele, and when I couldn't play Overwatch anymore, um, 
and I caught up on Steven, there were moments this week where I was like, all right, time to start, time to keep, time to continue seeing what made Kevin Sorbo a star. And I kept <laughs> watching Hercules, The Legendary Journeys. Oh, no. I, oh, I, I kept God. going. And I kept watching God these episodes. <laughs> I kept, I'm, I'm glad that I'm bringing it up to you because if Gang Mudo was on this episode, she would kill me because she's so tired of me talking about Kevin Sorbo and trying to figure you, out. You have a strange obsession with him now. It's <laughs> it's so weird. He's such a <laughs> shitty person. Like, like what, what compels you to keep watching this series? I, I, I feel like what it boils down to is like, I have, there's a, like, okay, well, I, I'm the guy who watched like all 10 seasons of Cheers. I'm uh-huh. also the guy who watched all 10 seasons because I loved Cheers. I watched Frasier. Oh, uh, um, okay. Like early, just, just earlier this year. So I need something to do when the renders are done. So I decided, uh, so, um, and this is like, and the, the CG's bad. The acting's like really shoddy. Like everything about this show is just not very good. Uh, and Kevin Sorbo as a person has been on record of saying like if Jesus came back to life he would vote for Donald Trump like that's the kind of person Kevin Sorbo is like it, Sweet. it <laughs> like I, I'm describing this person and I'm assuming the word that came to mind for both you uh, for both of you was tool so <laughs> I, I I mean that's not exactly the word that I would use <laughs> like so I watched like another another full like I watched the first full season of the show. It is Uh-oh. it is a <laughs> I it literally, oh it literally went every episode I would begin and I'm like all right let's maybe maybe there's something in this episode that'll keep me going and <laughs> clearly there is there no that's the thing right so like I'm on season two now. Xena showed up in season one. So I, I oh. now know why she gets her own show, because she's cool. She's a cool character. But now I'm on season two, and Sorbo is so far up his own asshole. Like, it is so real. I can't... I, I don't know why. I, I decided to just stop watching the show altogether. And <laughs> That's probably good because, you know, <laughs> you're doing the exact same thing that Stevani did <laughs> with Kevin. <laughs> it's exactly the same oh. thing, dude. <laughs> That's a whole stupid universe episode about why it's not good. <laughs> I love Elmo and it's just Kevin Sorbo in the other car. Yeah, <laughs> and, and it's me saying Kevin, like oh. Kev- Kevin Sorbo is the reason you're watching Hercules. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do this to yourself, man. It's self-destructive. It's oh my god. Okay, so what I'm hoping is that I find something new to watch, and <laughs> and, and you should and, you should you you you, uh, you should watch God's Not Dead. You should probably do that. Uh, I'm pretty because sure that can the, just cleanse you of your your yeah, yearning that'll be for a nice, Kevin Sorbo. Like, yeah, one final Sorbo performance to, to, to end as, all the Sorbo. Yeah, yeah. and then yeah. Uh, and then and then next week, the sad truth that matters. Next week, it's going to be like, guys, I couldn't find something to watch, <laughs> and I watched all of season two. Um, <laughs> no, so I just wanted to, I just wanted to give you a Sorbo update. Still, okay, thanks for the story still, update. Still Where are you watching this, by the way? Huh? Where I'm, are you watching this? I'm, I'm watching this on Netflix. Uh, yeah, it's on Netflix. Oh, I was going to say, uh, Josh, if you ever want to, like, I will gladly watch one of these sloppy pieces of shit with you. <laughs> like, I'm I'm so ready to share this misery that, uh, I, that I've, I've accumulated by watching. Like, it is... I feel like I would le- legitimately, like, die if I, I watch an episode of hercules it, it is it is okay it's it's gotten to the point where like i feel like i need to at least watch one episode with someone because i need someone else to know just how bad just this show is. your pain <laughs> it's like life is too short for this man the kevin sorbo the same man who when i asked hey if you could play a superhero who would you want to play his response was they're already taken i don't think i could pick one like, like I, I can't, like, I can't believe a man like this exists. So maybe that's why, like, I have this odd fascination with it's just like, how, how, how do you live? <laughs> like, what, what are you? 
Anyways, <laughs> speaking of obsessions with Kevin, let's talk about the last week of this. And when I say last week, I mean both the last week that we had of Steven Universe and the last week of Steven of the of the summer of Steven. So mm-hmm. the rum is getting to me, guys. I can feel it. <gasps> um, so uh, the f- right off the bat, I just want to say real quick. Um, Smoky Quartz is just me. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I hate that, but I love that. <laughs> like, oh, dude, Smoky Quartz is the shit. Like, like I, I what, what, what I mean to say by that is, it's like I, when I looked at Smoky Quartz, I immediately thought of myself at like eighteen. Um, mm-hmm. so like the way that the hair's done, the fact that she's like, the fact that they're kind of like big and stuff, like it's like, oh, it's just me. But but Smoky <laughs> Quartz is super cool. There were so many reveals and cool stuff that happened throughout this week. Um, yeah, it was a, it was a huge week. It's it six it, episodes. It was exhausting. six episodes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Damn, dude. But, but before we go even further into this, uh, Sora, because me and you are are uh, of like mind. Um, how amazing was that first, like, five minutes of the first episode of this week. With with the Labadoc yeah. feels? Oh, <laughs> so my good. God! It was so good. <laughs> I, it was so good. Oh I'm God. so happy. <laughs> They're not so cute with their little bow tie. Oh, dude, uh, the, way that, the way that, like, laugh is just, like, was, like, oh, she, like, she supports the art thing. Or, I'm sorry, yeah. uh, Meat Morp. Meat Morps, yeah. yeah. Meat Morp. <laughs> and, like, and it's just, like, like Peridot put all this effort into hers, and she's like, well, okay, I guess I'll make one, too. <laughs> like, right. it's it's so cute. I love it so much, and, like, actually, the minute I said that, I was reminded of something that I wasn't sure if you were aware of, uh, and I mm. guess this is kind of, obviously, uh, it's we do new sections either here or there, depending on whether it's relevant to us. Um, Lauren, uh, Zook, I believe that's how that's. Oh Zook. yeah, I, I heard about this. Okay, so she, Josh. She, uh, uh, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, Lauren Zook, one of the uh, storyboard and I believe writers on the show, right? Um, she, she, I don't know exactly what she does specifically, and also the rum is she's, really. She's getting, a storyboarder for like a lot of major episodes, right? Essentially, um, she's a storyboarder for a lot of major episodes. She was harassed by a small section of the fandom and it's gotten to the point where she had to delete her Twitter account. Um, uh, it would not, it would, it would not be proper of us to not talk about this. I feel, um, only because maybe not when I'm a couple shots of rub in, but we're going to, we're going to talk. about. Uh, I mean, it Um, does go to show you that, you know, just because you like a really good show, it doesn't make you a good person. I, I, (laughs) yeah, I I mean, yeah, I think that like the most important thing to take from this was, and just for those of you who, who are kind of unaware of what happened, uh, in terms of the, the exact extent from my understanding of the situation, from what Tumblr said and from what, uh, I've talked to a couple friends who were aware of what was going on, um, and some fan artists and stuff. From my understanding, it was it was because of specifically the episode this uh, like it's been a couple episodes, but the episode this earlier this week, the exact moment that Sora and I were talking about, that me and him are getting all giddy about. A lot of shippers of Amadot and like different ships in general just did not like that, and from my understanding, that's where the harassment came from. And specifically, the term queer baiting was used um, yeah. to describe what was going on. Um, obviously, it's all crap. It's all bullshit. Um, and I personally, think I mean, that- I I find it really sad, honestly, because Steven Universe is like it's something that's so so against like the main message of the show that... Josh are you telling me that a show about peace and love and acceptance of others <laughs> you are, you, are you telling me that that's not what they were trying to do uh, I mean well, it, you know I again and I said this before I mean Steven you know the Steven Universe fan base is a fan base that has its warts but so does every other show every other thing that is this popular you know absolutely yeah um and I mean like 
I don't know Lauren personally. And that's the thing, all of her followers, well, 90% of her followers don't know her personally either. And it's just, it's just kind of one of those weird things where it's like if you follow somebody on, on Twitter or Tumblr or any other social media site, and you follow you 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 read what they have like you, you follow them a long time you develop this sort of weird one-way relationship with them that it, it, people the way people interact with uh big celebrities quote unquote on these sites is kind of odd and fascinating in a way in that they'll like so like people were like talking with lauren as if they were like she was like close friends with them when she didn't know anybody so like i could totally understand why it would be really overwhelming for her like getting all of this like vitriol and hate like coming from like social media like it's just a huge stressor on her and i mean i'm sure that she's got a pretty pretty stressful uh job as is you know like storyboarding ain't easy and everything so Absolutely. i can hardly blame her for wanting to shut all this out because people i guess people were just expecting to give her for her to give 100 uh, her 100 percent attention to every single follower which just doesn't make sense um i uh this this whole thing is just garbage in my opinion it's it's one of those things where it's just like i it, the thing is this isn't the first time with this fandom either that's what gets me is like keystone motel is one another big thing that I'm not, <sighs> josh i'm not sure if you right. were uh if you were an active part of the fandom at that time i mean i only started watching steven like within the month yeah oh okay so do you remember the episode where uh the uh, blah 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 uh Greg takes uh, uh, Garnet and Steven to the hotel, and then Garnet splits, splits up. It's after the Sardonyx episode. Oh, okay, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so that Keystone Motel is a real place, <laughs> and uh, Steven Universe fans found it on, I don't know if it was Yelp or some, some sort of review site, and they just totally, like, trashed it because, like, as a joke, like, oh, 0 out of 10, like, cause, like, split, like, Garnet and... Uh, like Gar it was Garnet to split up, or it was also like they made a joke about how like it was kind of run down and like it was a not the greatest hotel and so Obtain they were square pizza it. that kind of bullshit. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a lot of in jokes for that episode. Yeah, and so they were like negatively affecting this real life business, and it's like not a good look, just not not a good look, I guess. And it's <sighs> it's a it's a very the thing the thing is, and maybe this is because like I'm the like I've never been into like a big non anime fandom like this is a good way of putting it um where this is this sort of thing just kind of happens and obviously this isn't the first time this sort of stuff happens and it's not going to be the last i feel uh just because of how the show kind of is and that's a weird way of putting it but like there's there's a lot of bullshit that happens and it's sora you're absolutely right there's a lot of like every fandom has these types of people in it but like at it's just it's so disheartening yeah to, to, uh, to get to this point so so one way to look at it and this is a really interesting viewpoint i think i might have mentioned this before so uh for like it's a kind of a parallel to like uh here's the storm uh that fan base is also pretty like you know volatile i guess it's a moba right so like people are going to be salty um and so the lead dev the the project director uh for here's the storm is also very active on twitter and, you know, whenever, like, they Blizzard makes some sort of balance change or, like, they introduce a new hero that's maybe a little overpowered or underpowered or whatever, he just gets hate and vitriol spewed at him. And it's just a nonstop onslaught of all these terrible tweets. And then, like, you know, every now and again, like, you know, somebody will tweet, like, hey, dude, like, sorry, these people are being so shitty. Like, I'm sure you know it's, the, it's a vocal, it's just a very vocal minority. And the way he deals with it, he says, is, like, it's fine, like, I wouldn't be getting all of these angry tweets if they didn't care about the game. And it just shows to me that they care a lot about the game. And so I guess it just shows that there's a lot of people, the, the fact that people get so up in arms about these characters shows that, you know, that there's something to the show, you know, there's something that's drawing people and people are staying. It's like, it, it's still absolutely not the best situation at all, but still like, it's just one, a, a different angle to look at it, I guess, you know? Hmm. <sighs> People need to be less shitty. Well, I don't know. And then that, and I mean, that being said, obviously, it's like, I guess a way to transition back out of that would just be, you know, to say, like, you know, as someone who literally runs a panel on 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 shipping, and 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 not not to not to be a dick about this argument, essentially, with the shipping war that literally went way way out of hand. Um, I wanted to remind everyone of something that I totally say in the artist shipping panel real quick. 
which is just everyone's going to have a different ship. Everyone's going to want like characters to be with different characters. And the truth of the matter is at the end of the day, that's just how it works for fandoms. You have to accept that kind of thing to hap- that will happen and just kind of move on from it. People are not going to share your opinions and people are going to see things that are different in each relationship. Pe- like Lapidot. People are going to see Lapidot and some people will see Amidot. But that doesn't necessarily mean that like one has to exist. There, there, there's no such mentality that is there can only be one. You can accept all ships. People ship things because they like that because they see something into it and if you don't personally see it you shouldn't hate or send hate or be an asshole about it right so the acceptance of ships is something that we talk about in the art of shipping panel and i think I, maybe that's why because it had to because the minute that like all of us like the lord like don't get me wrong someone deleting their twitter is a is a very shitty thing and like i had an opinion on it but the fact that like some of this had to do with like shipping bullshit is like oh well this isn't now all of a sudden this is in my field i have to say something Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. um anyways let's get out of this conversation topic because it's very down um, yeah, well, you know, not much to say besides slapping shitty. Yeah, it's, it's bullshit. Guys, don't be, don't be, be that guy. Be don't, be, don't be those Just guys. Just be Steven. Yeah, learn, yeah, yeah. Love um, everybody. What, what's that song? What's that thing as, as, I, as I drunkenly pull out my ukulele? What the fuck is that song? Oh, no. <laughs> uh, time for the singing and crying, right? Uh, Life and death and love and birth and peace and war on the planet were. Just do it. Oh, God. I can, the minute I touch the ukulele, I'm like, oh god, okay, this is bad. Uh, I need to drink some water or something. Like, very, very clearly, this is bad. Um, anyways, the episodes, uh, were great this week. Uh, there was a lot that happened. Um, Jasper, I, I, I'm so glad that the, the chain of Jasper being Sasuke just continues for you. The streak, the streak. Fuck you. The, con- the, con- the, con- the continuity. <laughs> The, the the never ending champion goals that Sasuke is is in, is alive is, is alive uh, and well in, in yeah, Jasper. How, so so how about that Jasper redemption arc, huh? Uh, <laughs> it was something. I super loved Jasper in like okay if Gang Mudo was here she would probably kill me for saying that. <laughs> yeah yeah. But uh, I super loved, stars. I super loved the fact that Jasper's the way she was like that was. Finding okay, like okay, name name dropping Pink Diamond. Yep, was like huge. The idea that like because I mean don't get me wrong, I I think it's because we all we always knew that there was like four diamonds, obviously, and I everyone had the theory that Pink Diamond was a thing, but well, that that Rose was Pink Diamond. That, yeah, yeah the, the Rose Quartz the, was Pink the, Diamond. Yeah, the main theory was that Rose was Pink Diamond, but the fact of the matter was was that like Jas like Jasper's loyalty to her Diamond changes this whole thing for, all, I, mm-hmm. for like for at least maybe not maybe not to like a huge extent, but for me it was very much like oh oh wow like it, it, for all we know. Like, there's a lot of speculation. For all we know, the way that Pearl is loyal to Rose could have been the way that Jasper was loyal to her diamond. The way Paradox right. was loyal to Yellow Diamond. Like, it's... This is, like, this is a very... Like, this is a knight without her lord. Like, this is... This is a, this is a very different situation that we're being presented in. And I, yeah. and I feel like, obviously, we will come back to that, and it'll, it'll be a thing... But, like, this is, like, for me, and for a lot of people, like, this is showing Jasper in a different light. I mean, obviously, there's people who still think Jasper's a piece of shit, and, you know, they're, you know, they're entitled to their opinion and stuff. But I feel like... I mean, it's it's something where it seems like Jasper's gone through a lot of shit. Yeah, yeah. But also, she has a fundamental misunderstanding of how <laughs> how emotions work, I guess, <laughs> It, something that's so interesting to me is that you know when she tried that super desperate fusion with that other Jasper, whatever that the the, the corrupted gem, um, and then like they they the unfused and she was like wait come back like oh like everyone I fused with never wants to stay and it's like I really kind of paints a picture of she doesn't understand why people are so avoid like are are so averse to fusing with her because to her 
fusion is only about increasing power, and that's it. Hmm. And she wouldn't understand why anyone else would want anything out of a fusion besides an increase in power. I mean, I feel like that's not an uncommon opinion for, like, homeworld gems either. It's something right. where, like, what Rose's group of, like, the crystal gems has is very different from, like, how everybody else oh, thinks of fusion. Yeah. Absolutely, because I mean, the only other time we've seen um, homeworld gems fuse is when it's the, of the same type. So, like, we've only seen ru like rubies are the best example. That's a, yeah, that's a good point. You're right. Yeah. Um, even like even when uh, there was like um, in something entirely new, like I, I feel like our brand new world. I can't remember the name of that episode. The episode where uh, Garnet's telling the story of how ruby. The answer. Set. Oh yeah. yeah, the answer. Um, that was like the like the only other time we'd seen homeworld gems fuse and it was with each other and it's and it, as far as i know it just seems like it's like it's only when rubies need to group up and become strong <laughs> like like <laughs> like it's it just seems like i've never seen other homeworld gems do it then again we haven't seen other like multiple homeworld gems before so um, right it it is a very I mean, from the way they act about it, it seems like it's just not accepted for like gems of different types to fuse. Oh, that yeah, that's the whole point of, of the yeah, so answer. It's was like, like, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if the diamonds kind of instigated that because they knew it would be a risk to their regime. Oh, there is because it's obvious that that a fusion from two different gems is way more powerful than you know just the plain ruby fusion. Uh, I think you know what I mean. The point about fusions is that fusions create something entirely other. Yeah. And gem society seems to be built on just having, like, this cast of, like, you are a pearl, you are a ruby, you are a quartz, and you do what you do. Well, I mean, that there are giant theories running around nowadays um, that, like, because Parad, like, it all, it, like, one of the big things that started the theories was, like, Paradot being able to metal bend. Um, I know it's not what it's called, I'm calling it metal bending, though. Um, yeah, no, so it's, it's, it's totally metal bending. So yeah, it's pretty much metal bending. The thing is, the Paradox ever, ever since that was revealed, um, there's people who have been speculating that like, it's like, the diamonds aren't telling all the gems everything. They are purposely holding information back. Mm -hmm. Like, it's it's one of those things where it's like it's gotten to the point where it's like. They like fusion between two different members of or two different gems. It holds a whole new world of power and 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 possibility. And I bet and I bet you anything, like I bet you anything that like when they say that Rose shattered, um, Pink Diamond, that it was that she was fused with someone else when she did that mm -hmm. because the the idea is that by by fusing they are beyond powerful like they they transcend the natural order so it's a very interesting idea i mean to the point where i mean they've told peridot that like i'm not maybe it's not that they, they didn't tell her but it's like i don't think i think it's like peridot can't change her body but it's it's not a matter of like if she can or not it's a matter of like did they tell her that she can't do that and that she's just limiting herself because of these expectations that are that are already like that already um exist in her mind because of the diamonds so it's it's this these theories are running around where it's just like the the whole gem society is based on giant oppression <laughs> so. i mean it's something that gives jasper definitely different kind of characterization like she honestly didn't probably know anything other than like the role she was given Oh, of course. And That's why that she made her into strength. the person she was, especially yeah. after losing her, like, raison d'etre mm. with, like, losing her diamond. It's something that when you remove something like that from a person's life, it warps them. Yeah, I mean, just look at Pearl. I mean, shit. I mean, I mean, look at, look at Sasuke. Like, I mean, yeah. you're, 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 <laughs> you're, fucking you're, damn it. You're, you're, you're moved, you removed his purpose, and, and now he's roaming uh, the, the, the wild lands of Konoha. Sasuke. <laughs> I mean, no, on, honestly, um, <laughs> it's sort of sad that all, all the gems, aside from the crystal gems, are like this. It's it's a yeah, it's a bummer. It, it, it a, seems like a really big like undertaking to change anything like that. So monolithic. Mm. 
Well, I think that like all that being said, I think that like at the end of the day, like for like for ja- like Jasper specifically, I think that like it's people are very polar. I think I was really hoping that like this would help some people like s- the thing with Steven Universe and it's something that like um that Maddie has brought up in our conversations when we talk about it is the idea that like the whole idea of Steven Universe is that things can be presented in black and white. But most of the time, it's in a gray. Yeah, shades of gray. So, yeah. if anything, Summer of Steven, this entire season of Steven Universe, has expressed the idea that, like, all the other seasons presented, oh, Crystal Gem's good, Homeworld Gem's bad. Right. It's more than that. There's, like, like, like the thing, the coolest thing to me about Bismuth, which is something we kind of talked about last time, the coolest thing to me about Business was, was the fact that she was a, a crystal gem extremist. She like mm-hmm. she maybe extremist is, is a well an extreme word, uh, to a very strong word to use. Maybe it's more like she was very willing to kill other gems to to win the war, because and and it was it was against the ideology that Rose set for the crystal gems. So it, it was a very it's it's it, it was to show that there is a good and a bad to both ends. There's never uh, there's never one hundred percent good, one hundred percent evil. Jasper, in that same regard, is not one hundred percent bad. She's very rough around the edges, cause sand, anyways. Oh, um, um, she's she's very rough, but she's not bad it's that she her purpose in life is to is to fight she's lost her purpose so it, it and and it's something and it's something that kind of is, is interesting because people have brought up especially on tumblr where it's like they're noting little details ever since the pink diamond reveal was 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 made where it was like if you've ever noticed whenever jasper refers to, like whenever someone refers to a diamond they're always like my diamond my diamond and yeah. jasper was the only one who ever specifically stated yellow diamond so mm. it's it's a very it's it's one of those interesting little details and stuff and it's like it's it's one of those things where it's like i i personally see jasper as a character who is still i can see a redemption arc like and that's the thing if, to anyone who says that there is no redemption arc foreseeable for jasper yes for right now for right now, I think they tabled it, if anything. But, I think Steven will develop his powers to the point where they can figure out, or they'll find some sort of way to reverse the diamond corruption. It's but, definitely uh, something where oh, it's she like... she will be the first one that they'll probably handle. Oh, uh, no, dude, fuck that centipedal, dude. Well, centipedal's happy right put, now. Put centipedal on a priority. I don't... <laughs> she, she could be happier, goddammit. I, I know, I know, but... I'm still bummed. But the, the thing is, is that I feel like, um... I feel like what's going to happen is because, okay, look, remember when Peridot, like people were saying like Peridot was doing the messages and stuff during the week of Sardonyx and stuff. And like, it got to a point where like she, I mean, when, the minute like she removed her leg, like she was pulling some Jack Splicer stuff right there. Jack Spicer from Shaolin <laughs> Showdown. You guys oh remember God. that guy? Oh my God. That was Peridot for like a while. And she, and, yep. and, and yep. I mean, she kidnapped Steven. She like set up a, a, a relay. Like she was like the villain of like the goofy villain of the week. And people were saying that there wasn't going to be a redemption arc for her. And now look at how far she's come since then. Like it's, it's one of those things where it's like Steven Universe is a show that is the, that have anything can just show that like there's there's a lot of character like no characters black and white and i see jet if jasper does come through again i feel like it's gonna be more her arc might be more about understanding that there's more to life than just one singular purpose mm. for sure so ah man <laughs> damn the show's so good i one thing about this week that I really enjoyed was it was continuing off of the theme of comparing Steven uh, with Rose to Sasuke. And oh. it, to Sasuke, <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> to to but like, you know, <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> I'm fucking done. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy that podcast, I can ruin yeah, this right? podcast. Yeah, no. Yeah, no, no. If I could... The Naruto cast now. Oh, God. Fuck you guys. Wasn't it cool when uh, Steven used the Rasengan? And and, and, and and it was the best. Yeah. It was the best. I love it. 
Soccer's Let's see if a new uh, Shadow Clone no Jutsu. It yeah. wasn't wasn't the episode No Your Jutsu like the best. <laughs> that was Oh yeah, absolutely. That was great. No your Jinkuri. Anyways. My uh, my uh my favorite episode. I'm sorry, Sora. Go go ahead. I'll I'll stop son, I'll son stop bashing you. <laughs> I Hold on, what what the fuck was I talking about? I you were... Oh, the Rose Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So Steven Stephen's all like still being compared to Rose Quartz, and it's also the show is kind of painting Rose Quartz not in a bad light, but in a, like you said, like a morally gray one. You know, the fact that it was revealed that she shattered Pink Diamond. I I'm really enjoying the fact that Stephen has to pick up where Qu Rose Quartz left off, but also kind of imp like do it in his own way. No, I say, you know? Bismuth put it the best. I feel. yeah, Bismuth put put it the best, and the fact that like he owned up to what happened with Bismuth and told everyone made him better in Bismuth's eyes at least than Rose Quartz. Um and it's interesting because like I wonder what's gonna happen with those uh those garnets or not wow well, those garnets, those rubies that he left out in space. <laughs> you know? <laughs> like they're just slowly drifting. No, they they're gonna know? crash land and it's like it's gonna be two of them and they'll be where did we go? What oh did we god. do? <laughs> oh god. <sighs> um I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they go back out there and try to find them. I don't know. Like, that just seems like something Steven would want to do. Um, and, it, yeah, I, it's the fact that Steven's forced to address these great, these, like, morally difficult questions, the same kind of questions that his mom had to run into. It's, it's awesome. I'm really enjoying it. And it's really kind of maturing Steven as a character, and we're seeing him grow before our eyes. It's, it's awesome. I'm, I'm digging it. Mm. It's like Stephen is almost like the epitome of like the hope for like future generations where it's like, you know, it's your like you hold on to that optimism that like future generations will be able to like take the step that your generation couldn't. Right. L yeah. Like like Seymour from Final Fantasy X. Like, yes. he, 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 what? You know, uh, like the Guado Seymour. Uh, but, oh yeah, I, yeah, I see. yeah, yeah. You know, back. I'm. I gotcha, man. <laughs> no. I'm Suddenly, sorry. like that just this light like... of comprehension, like blinks uh. into my eyes. <laughs> he was, he was the, he was the cross between a human and a guado, and he was gonna be the hope for their world. And then he summoned Anima, and wanted to. Oh you know... well. Okay, yeah. I'm sorry. Okay. No, 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 I'm get. I get you. Right. I'm with no, you. Understand. You, know, the best you know, you're okay. You guys are right. Like Stephen is. Stephen <laughs> is the is the, the guiding hope of of like he he himself his his creation is morally gray in in gem culture, which I think is in itself is like he he has the power to be pretend like anything he wants to be, like that. That's what makes the show fun, like at least for me. Yeah, definitely. I, uh, it's funny because he's finally asking questions about himself now. Like when uh, when the ruby threatened to pull out his gem, he's like, "Don't pull out my gem!" Like, wait, what would happen to me? <laughs> uh, didn't think yeah. that part through. No, uh, I just wanted to say real quick because I feel like I'm gonna forget it otherwise. Know your fusion was the one of the most real things that like a like it, it is a weird episode because it, it's very funny and lighthearted. Ha ha. Uh, Smoky Quartz, I love the fact that, like, out of, like, all the fusions represent, like, something with both, like, both members of that fusion, right? Like, mm -hmm. like, like, the best one I can think of at the top of my head is, like, I don't know, uh, Garnet, which has qualities of both Ruby and Sapphire, right? But, like, when you think about it, like, Smoky Quartz's qualities make absolute sense. She's funny, but she's also self-loathing. Because guess yeah. cause that is all that is the one of the things that Steven and um, Amethyst have in common is the yeah. is their is their is their self image like it and their love for puns and one liners exactly so it's like it, it like that was probably my favorite part of that episode is like is like having that realization it's like oh yeah I guess fusion is kind of like it is the sum of both parts and something entirely more. But in this case, it's like the thing, like the thing that is in common is not a positive trait. And I, mm -hmm. and I think that that was a really cool way to show that fusion. Like, cause, uh, cause don't get wrong. Like Smoky Quartz is great, but like, I also think it's amazing that like, if there is a negative quality that was emphasized, 
Like yeah, definitely. And I think that's why this show handles fusions like really fucking well because it's not only does it create a whole new character, you know, every single time somebody fuses, but like it also has huge ramifications on the two that are fusing and other and even other characters that are around, like how they react to it and stuff. Like that whole episode, like where like even even though Know Your Fusion was kind of like a jokey meta episode, like it still kind of you know had a little like, kind of a cute character moment in that like you know. Um, uh, Smoky Quartz like kind of wasn't sure what was the wow factor behind their own fusion, and then also Sardonyx had realized that like oh shit like this is supposed to be about them, but I we made it all about ourselves, you know. Mm. Um, it's just uh, goddamn the, this show handles its fusions really well and makes things really really interesting. Oh yeah. Um, and it handles it with the weight that uh it needs to. You know, I I, I still don't think. Like I, I'm a little afraid of getting gem or fusion fatigue, so to speak. But I think the show spaces them out well enough. I don't, uh, I don't see it happening for, for, yeah, for me. I mean, but it, like, I obviously I have my you know incredible bias towards fusion. Um, I, I, they can't. You're right. They because I guess maybe it's maybe it's because of how much they pace it. Like every time you see a fusion, it's a big special little event. It's an event for for not just the audience, but also the characters too. You know. Mm. The characters are just as amped to see a new fusion as the as the audience is. Right, like, like I'm not gonna lie, like seeing like even like seeing Stevani any time is like super fun because it's like oh yeah, it's like oh oh like like when especially when Stevani fights Jasper and you get that cool sweet like sword and shield action like it's oh it's, yeah it's just amazing it's fun. Um, although a lot of people are now questioning, so it's like and I and I it's very it's something that was interesting that I thought. Like I, I kind of want to know, um, if Pearl and Steven fuse, would they make a variant of Rainbow Quartz? Yeah, I don't know. I, I mm. would assume so. I, yes, I, I think it would be. Well, I think it would be different. I think it'd be a new fusion. I, I interesting. I'd say, I I'd maybe I'd say like there'd be aesthetic differences, but it would be the there'd same. There'd be totally fusion. aesthetic differences. I, I don't know what they would call it, but. Yeah, I mean, I think part of a fusion, the way a fusion works is that it's combining both gems self-image, so to speak, and combining it into one entity, you know? And so obviously, Rainbow Quartz isn't going to look the same when Pearl fuses with Steven as opposed to when they fuse, when Rose, and, Rose Quartz and uh, Pearl fuse, you know? And also, like, the the relationship is totally different, you know? It's from romantic to more, more like, maternal at that point, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, I don't know. It's an interesting thought. I hadn't thought of that before. Mm. Um, that being that being said, uh, just because uh, we have been going on this for for some time, uh, <laughs> and I just want to make sure we're all kind of on the same page here. Um, we are. This is the end of St of the summer of Stephen. So in other words, so that was a full month. <laughs> that was, oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. There is um, no more. There, there. I, I, I am so ready to take another break from Stephen. Like that was, that was insane. That was, that was just crazy. Like I, I we've been. I mean, let me put it this way: we, we've been doing the podcast for a while now. Like this is episode like five, right? Um, uh huh. I, I'm pretty sure in the first episode we were already talking about Summer of Stephen. Oh no, we were prepping for Summer of Stephen. But like it, I can't believe like we're at the end of this, and it's just it's a full season of episodes. Like we started off with, I think, what was it, Barn Mates, right? No, mm -hmm. we started off with um, shit. <laughs> we start we started off with uh, Stephen floats, and and yes, now yeah, we're yeah, here. Yeah. Um. I feel like we're I'm, I, there's this whole subject I want to get into of where it's it's talking about the the Steven the summer of Steven as a whole how it was executed what the thoughts are about the episodes because uh, obviously there's like there were so many episodes and what it means thematically for the show um whereas like if there's you know there's a whole thing I want to talk about but I would feel a thousand times better if Gang Muda was here mm -hmm. because she of she course. loves this show just as much as we do um so. Uh, but for for the, at least for covering the last week, I think we're I, everyone got what they wanted to say out of the way. Like I feel like I feel like we're all good. 
Uh, yeah. yeah it's I think I'm all set. Pretty much good. Kindergarten Kid was amazing. <laughs> yes. I laughed way too hard at that episode. <laughs> That's interesting. I, 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 some of my friends were like, "Oh, this is a fucking Roadrunner episode." I thought it was cute. I thought it was good. Again, I appreciate these slower paced episodes. Not everything has to be bombastic, you know, huge character moment and shit like I, that. I'm glad to have these kind of laid back episodes. You it know, it was the first episode of season four, and I just wanted to say real quick like that that the idea, like I, like the idea that Paradox can survive so much. <laughs> It's like so <laughs> funny yeah. to me. Everyone wanted to see her poof so bad just so she'd get a redesign to see where the where the star's gonna go. <laughs> like, oh my god. Uh, but also because at the end of the episode there's a laptop moment and I I just uh, oh, it's yeah. so subtle, it's so subtle and yet I'm like I'm like oh oh god it's... it feels so lonely being like an Amidot person. No, it's... <laughs> Don't. It's, it's okay to... Okay, look, there's... I mean, there's Amidot moments. I mean, but, like, I don't know, like... No, I but guess... Lapidot definitely has, like, more things going on, No, it, it's, I guess. it's not even that. I feel like... Because, like, I feel like what it boils down to is, like, once again, you can ship whatever you want to ship. I think the reason why I've been... I'm just so excited and happy for every single Lapidot moment is because I've been in this ship since it was a crack ship. I've been I've been in right. the, I've been in this ship since I was called insane for shipping this ship, and so the fact that it's canon now makes me giddy. Not canon. I mean, like it. The fact that there's actual canon interactions and it's gone this far, for me is just amazing. It feels yeah. wonderful. Like yeah, I never in a million years thought this was the direction it would actually go. So, um. But I mean, Amadot totally. I mean, Amadot totally has its own thing. Like, there's so many good moments that they have and they share together. And like, they they they're part of the Shorty Squad. They're all hang out together. <laughs> I don't. They're it's all cute and fun. Okay, just uh. Anyways, that that's Steven. That's the Steven talk for this week. Um. Well, we're, next week, uh, when Gang Muda hopefully can come back. Hopefully, she feels a little better. Um. Did someone break a glass? Uh, no. Uh, um, when when she can come back, we'll talk about the Steven, Summer Steven as a whole and get into that. Um, so there was a couple other things to talk about this week. <laughs> like, like we, we, there was, um, but we are about reaching about the hour and a half mark. Um, so I think, I think the, the, the next important thing would be to at least get us out of the way before we get into anything further is we do have uh the velvet talk um comments from the last episode also oh, okay. also yeah. uh, also if i'm if i'm starting to slow down in my speech guys rum so uh. this was a very different episode and i regret it immediately um <laughs> that that is regret real. It with us no no <laughs> Okay, look, okay. So, in the last episode, we had a cut, like, uh, 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 66 views on YouTube as of this episode, and, you know, always happy for that. Um, and, uh, we have four comments we're gonna read off this week. The first one is from Astral Muffin, uh, says, Wow, Mitchell, I'm actually surprised that the one thing we're not in sync on is Suicide Squad. I actually enjoyed it a lot more than I expected to, and I went in with low expectations uh, in the first place. Sure, the editing was messy as hell and the plot was a bit pushed, but it was fun little side story for the DC Cinematic Universe, and I enjoyed it more than Batman v Superman, honestly. You guys are free to your opinion, though, and I've said my piece. I'm gonna, well said, I'm gonna read the next one. <laughs> What? Why not? I don't, no, no, I thought no, that was well done. No, like, no, okay, so Astral, uh, I just want to say real quick, you are, yeah, it, you're totally entitled to your own opinion. If you like that movie, that's, that's super fine. Um, so, so see, this is how you have d d disagreeing opinions. <laughs> what? <laughs> not, <laughs> as opposed to the oh, Lapidot yeah, yeah. Amidon No, stuff. I mean, okay, that's the thing. Like, yes, in because okay, the next comment, the reason I was going to read the next one is because it literally says, dang, Mitch was salty here. Yeah, <laughs> I'll probably okay. still see Suicide Squad. Going to wait for the dollar to end it, though. Yeah. Um, so... I just wanted to say real quick, if uh, I like, I have my own personal opinions on this movie, and you know, it's 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 whatever. Like that's my opinion on it. If you still enjoyed this film, 
you're totally you are totally valid for enjoying the movie like it is not a bad thing that you enjoyed this film uh i just personally see that there's a lot of problems with it and i guess it's for me it was like i had a higher expectation for um what i was expecting to see uh, and I was just disappointed on so many levels. And on top of that, to be honest with you, the movie for me is like a, a, a solid at least C plus or C minus. It's the fact that they romanticized and edited the movie around the idea that Jared Leto and uh, Harley Quinn are supposed to be like the power couple of the film. Sure, That's what sure. grosses me out and and totally just drags it down for me. Um the next comment, just uh, to move on from that, was uh, I uh, Mecca Phoenix says, I can't believe Jasper died. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only thing that they put down. And that was also, I'm sorry, uh, Danny Dolan was the one who said the Mitch was salt thing. I'm sorry. Uh, and then uh, rest. Oh, God, I'm so sorry, man. Every single time. Uh, Refresden, Refresden. Uh, Refresden. Yeah. Uh, Lapis can control 70% of the earth if she wanted to, uh, or if she wanted to, she could have poofed Jasper in jailbreak, but she has a victim complex and took out her frustration on a beaten and defeated warrior, trapping Jasper in the confines of her own mind until she went crazy with fusion lust. How is Lapis the victim again? Plus alone in, in, in this alone in the sea refers to Jasper, no Lapis. Not Lapis. That's oh, the title thing is interesting. I didn't think of it like that before. He's, that is wow, that is shit. a really solid point. Um, yeah. The the thing that I guess the the thing is is that Lapis is a victim in her own way. It's 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 a, it's a very weird thing. So you got to look back all the way at Jailbreak, and that scene specifically. Lapis tries to get away, and Jasper, uh, you know, kind of pushes slightly pushes the idea of hey like grabs her by the wrist and says hey fuse with me we can beat them and it's in at that moment it's a it's a very in the moment kind of thing and obviously and, and now we obviously now that the time has passed we know that lapis you know fused with her to trap her at the bottom of the ocean and that was the plan it's a very well once again steven universe is a black and white thing the thing that i really liked about alone at sea is the idea that both of the parties were to blame for what happened. Yeah, it, it, it's so good. Like, going back to the moral gray issue, exactly. Like, it's so... I, I'm so done with the fact that, like, Lapis isn't morally justified, like, not totally morally justified in what she did. And it's it's really, like... Let's see, I forget what episode what the episode name was, but when, you know, Steven, like, did his astral projection and, like, got to talk with Lapis briefly while they are still Malachite... She was like, let me do this for you. When I think she was just telling herself that it was for Steven, when I think oh, part of her knew that she was also doing it for herself. Absolutely. You know? and like, I, I didn't catch that at all until let's see. So I, I, so I just, just, just so you know, uh, Russ, Refresden, Refresenden, um, the idea is that Lapis is, a, is, it's because Lapis didn't even want to initially do it. I feel like that's a big part of it is she, she was taken to earth by by Jasper as an informant, uh, well, not by specifically Jasper, but by the diamonds. And the idea is like Jasper is just kind of that a agent of them. Uh, and the idea is that it's it's just it's both parties that are just kind of hurting each other in that relationship. And I, it's 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 I mean, we, we went over it last week, so I'm, we yeah. shouldn't go too far. Toxicity goes two ways. Yep. Exactly. So. And uh, and obviously and that's and that's a whole different Tumblr can of worms, which was literally I mean, I'm not sure you you are not on there, uh, Sora, but like during that whole week, it was literally like the argument of which one is in the wrong when in honest in all honesty, the answer should be they're both in the wrong. Um, uh, I mean, I think part of the problem is just like how our society deals with interpersonal relationships like this. Like, it is very one-sided when our society goes, oh, yeah, well, this person was the one who was wrong in this relationship. Sure. Whereas yeah. it's yeah. a two-way street. It, it, it's it, and, okay. and obviously everything is like, just 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 so everyone knows that Josh is not saying that it's it's both sides all the time. There, I mean, it's, it's, it's varying levels, I feel. So, um, it, 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 every situation is different. So uh, you it's know, like it's take that for what it's worth. Honestly, probably just harmful to like look at it simply as being 
this person was the bad guy in this. And it's bad to look for like blame in a situation like that instead of looking for a solution. Hmm. I uh no, but it's it was a very good comment. Uh and I just so essentially uh we were supposed to talk about other things, but once again, we are we are way I'm I am a little more drunk than I wanted to be. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's the, I can't keep blaming this on the time because we do uh, we've done podcasts that are longer. I am a little bit more drunk than I want to be. Um, so I guess psychopaths another time. Yeah, yes. Josh, like Josh, this was a, it was a it was a great pleasure to have you on the show, and um, it it yeah, it was it was definitely fun uh, to have a, a a new perspective. I'm sorry that the episode you decided to come on was the one I also was like, let's get drunk. Ah, uh, so, yeah. Um, <laughs> So, Pass me a shot, will you? God damn it! Uh, so thanks everyone for coming to another exciting episode of the Velvet Room. Be sure to like uh, this video if you really enjoyed it, and if you you know, be, and also share your comments down below if you have any thoughts about anything we talked about, any of the anime, or if you have your own thoughts about you know Jasper or anything that we talk about for Steven Universe. Leave it down below, and we'll totally read it next episode. Um, as uh, I believe it's this episode or next episode, but we're going to start uh, doing a thing where we're going to divide it so that you will have the option of watching it on YouTube or watching the podcast on YouTube and also having it on, I believe, SoundCloud. So we're going to try to set something up there. I'll, let, I'll yeah. let you guys know either like through the Tumblr or something to to get to let everyone know what's going on. So uh, this week for your YouTube videos that you guys are going to be getting, uh, Wednesday, I believe, is uh, Asagao Academy. We're, going, we're still trucking it hard at Asagao Academy. Love is still strong and alive. But oh, man. We, we, we really want the, the, we really want to date Mai in that game, like the, the female friend. We really want that to be a route, and it's not, and it's killing us inside. Um, so there's that. <laughs> and um stupid also, otome games uh, I, I know uh no um there's also a more dramatical murder coming your way we're gonna actually um we're gonna uh the mission is clear we're going over there we're going to do the mission we're gonna save granny in this week's episode of dramatical murder and batman finishes up next sunday so uh the first episode of batman i should say so uh, there's no intros or outros for that one, but I feel like that's more because I'm going to make that for the second episode uh, rather than for uh, the first one. Just to make sure, because if, if, if it, I'd feel like it was a waste if we weren't going to come back to that game. But hopefully you guys are enjoying all the videos and everything, and uh, yeah! So, yeah. anything you guys want to say before you head out? Uh, it was fun talking with Josh on the show. Finally have someone else to talk to about ReZero and Mob Psycho. Oh man, about that. can't wait for the next episodes. Oh yeah, dude. It's gonna be so good. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I I will I'm have to check out one of those, uh, and the next time Josh is on, we'll have to talk about it. All right. Yeah. So Josh, anything you want to say real quick before I, I start like saying everything goodbye? <laughs> um, it was a pleasure to be here. Um, you know, yeah, it's man. like, dang, <laughs> it's oh. like I'll probably have to like try to stay up to date with all the series now because <laughs> now I'm beholden yeah. to it. You have to watch Hercules, The Legendary Journey now. You have to watch oh, Kevin man. Sorbo. So this is how it's happening. No. This is how my <laughs> life ends. Why, why are we chasing him? We fused for Kevin Sorbo. Uh, oh, okay, oh, I'm done, guys. All right. <laughs> oh, my God. I, I'm going to go try to... I'm going to go try to sleep this off. All right. <laughs> okay. All right. So, all right, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us. Next time on the vault room. Bye. Yeah, Bye. man. Bye, guys.